charter schools. So they charged us to come together to begin that work. And over the summer of that year, we had a student intern, his name is Danny Miller, who did some great work in doing the research around charters. And what's interesting, if you go out, uh, go out on the internet and um, start a project to support charter schools, you can get all you want. If you go out on the internet to oppose charter schools, you can get all you want. So depending on the perspective that you go into it, you can get that kind of feedback. So our board wanted us to have an informational document to let our members in particular, and also our citizens and legislators, know what was actually going on, so that as we do move forward, there can be informed decisions. Because when you ask the question, are you for or against, which I think this is the wrong question, but when you ask the question, are you for or against charter schools, lots of emotions fly, um, come up. And we need to be asking the question, are you for or against closing achievement caps? And I think that's more about what we're about. But at any rate, uh, then he did the paper, which was the starting point for a study group. We put out uh, a call to our membership uh, to serve on a, uh, on a study group around charter schools and to inform us of our next steps. So we did that, and what came out of that was a, first of all, a revision of that original paper, and Susan Weston was able to bring all of the discussions together into the paper. Um, some of the intense discussions are not in there, but the, uh, but the, the realities about charter schools are in there. And you have that report in your packets. We're going to be releasing that to the media today. But we think it may be one of the very few um, projects, research papers out there that is neutral. And you'll see in there at this particular time, the Bridge Committee hasn't taken a position yet. And the reason for that, there are a couple of reasons. One is that if we did take a position today and we passed out a neutral document, whichever position we took, the opposite side would say that the paper was skewed. We want this to be truly an informational document that people can use for our legislators to be able to use. At the very back of that document is a rubric. So any charter bill that comes forward, questions in our, in our uh, paper um, are to be asked about uh, whether or not that bill meets the criteria in that rubric. We think that that's a, a service to our state. So with that, I'm going to ask Liza and Gentry to come up, and two members of our committee who uh, were active members, and to share a little bit about the process. And then after they're finished, Paul O'Neill is here from the National Governors Association. So he has a national perspective on charter schools across our country for the last 20 years. And I think that you will find that Paul will give you a very neutral look at this so you can make your own decisions about where you want to go with it. Because I think that's going to be important for, for our next steps. But I asked him if it was okay to call it this, but he'll, he will share with you kind of a charter school one-on-one on top of the paper that we did. And you'll get that. Now his bio is in the, um, in the package. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that. And, we want to give them, give them time. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Liza Gentry, who's first. Guys. Gentry. Good morning, everyone. For those who are near here, Gentry is one of our student voice team members who participated in, uh, in the study groups. Um, so as Stu said, I'm a member of the Pritchard Committee student voice team. I'm a senior at West Chessman. And before I begin, I want to just say to all the teachers in the room, we have a snow day at Chessman Tron. So no worries, won't be missing any calculus. Um, anyway, Rachel Bellin, over here, uh, invited me back in late August to join this focus group. Um, she gave me kind of the lowdown, described who I'd be working with, the types of things we'd be discussing, um, kind of the dynamics of the group. But quite honestly, as soon as I heard the words charter schools, 
I responded with a definite yes. Um, I knew how contentious this was getting, not only within the nation, but within Kentucky, as we are one of eight, eight in the entire nation to not have any kind of legislation on this matter. Um, even though it's been brought up year after year. So aside from my sense of knowledge of the debate's existence, I really knew nothing about what a charter school even was. Um, however, Liza sent out the recruiter report uh, in the following weeks after the original invited me. Um, after reading through that, and by the way, the recruiter report is by far the most comprehensive and unbiased report um, from Stanford, their uh, Center for Research on Educational Outcomes. Um, and after reading that, I was absolutely blown away. Absolutely blown away. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's this report that made me realize how valuable and complex the work is that we do every day. Um, and I hate to give legislators a bone here, but I did not say that I understand how stressful, stressful their job is. Uh, guys, this is by far a monster of a debate. Um, the Bridger Committee will continue determining what's best for Kentucky students. So, I can proudly say that after Eliza and I share our resulting material from our discussions, we'll begin determining the best next steps in action. So with that, uh, here's an overview of this group's outcomes and conclusions to date. Over the past 25 years, Kentucky has made remarkable progress in students' educational achievement. But, significant gaps still persist between different segments of our student population. We will never be truly successful as a state unless every child is well prepared for life in our ever increasingly complex society. So Kentucky has a number of programs in place to address the achievement gap, but the pace of progress is, is painfully, painfully slow. And as we said in our last meeting, our kids cannot wait. So in response to this, many people uh, believe that charter schools may be a part of the solution. In order to educate ourselves about charter schools and to discern what we might learn from the past two decades of their existence, um, the Pritchard Committee invited its members and other key, key stakeholders, including myself and Liza, um, to participate in the study group about charters. Hard act to follow here, isn't it wonderful? So over the summer, the Pritchard Committee commissioned a letter to review to provide a foundation for the committee's work. In addition, a bank of materials was provided to the group to prepare for our time together. We were joined at our first meeting for a panel by Wayne Lewis, assistant professor at the University of Kentucky, as well as a leader in the Kentucky Charter Schools Association, and Mary Ann Blankenship, executive director of the Kentucky Education Association, who presented a for and against perspective on charter schools in Kentucky. Looking towards the national experience, we were joined in the afternoon by Patrick Walsh, executive director, statewide monitor for the Louisiana Department of Education, who shared the experience in Louisiana with charter schools, particularly in New Orleans after Katrina's. In between meetings, Susan Weston undertook the task of crafting a draft report on the key issues surrounding charter schools and any potential legislation. At our second meeting, Dr. Terry Holliday joined the group to share his perspective and experience that he's had with charter schools in North Carolina. Josh Cunningham, an education policy specialist for the National Conference of State Legislatures, was our final presenter, sharing a national perspective on relative successes and issues surrounding charter schools. The committee then held a lively discussion and made some adjustments and changes, resulting in the report which you received via email prior to this meeting and also having the packets. The study group sees the report as a first step in a process to engage people in thoughtful discussion of whether charters might be a useful tool for Kentucky to use in its efforts to close the achievement gap. The study group does not, at this point, advocate either for or against the implementation of charter schools. What we seek to do is to provide an opportunity for citizens and legislators alike to learn more about charters and to engage in thoughtful discussion about both the opportunities and the unintended consequences that they present. Our overall focus must be on finding and implementing the best strategies so that all children in Kentucky can succeed. Our thanks to the committee members who brought a variety of perspectives and experiences which made for a very rich examination of the subject. Committee members include Candace Kesslin Brake, Sam Corbett, Frederick Cowgill, Ben Cundiff, Jean Dorton, Bill Garmer, Megan Glynn, Fanny Louise Maddox, Norma Meek, Helen Mountjoy,
David Takao, Gentry Fish, Christine Frank, Tim Hanner, Tracy Herman, Judy Casey, Rich Maddox, Vince Maddox, Chikiri Uchebu. And with that, now we would like to welcome Paul O'Neill of the National Governors Association to give the whole group a bit of a perspective on charter schools. As Paul is coming up, we do have a gift for you guys. I want to say thanks to, that's not for you, but I want to make sure I get these correct right here. Um, Liza and Gentry, thank you guys so much. We appreciate you preparing for today.
And I, I saw frequently there are references to the distinction between charter schools and public schools. I think it's more helpful to think of charter schools as a form of public schools because they are. Uh, and I understand in some respects saying the public schools versus the charter schools is a shorthand way of saying the traditional district structure and then this sort of other structure. But, but I think some folks aren't fully aware that charter schools are public and they are. Um, charter schools, uh, under all the laws, are free from many state and local rules in exchange for greater accountability. And the idea is supposed to be you get more flexibility, but you're more accountable for results. This is not always true in reality. Um, and I think that's something that we'll, we'll come back to. Um, charter, the charter is a, is, a, is a contract. The charter and charter school means that you work with some governmental or quasi-governmental entity, whether it's a, a district or a state office or a university, and they, they issue you a document, essentially, that says you have the right to run this school under the following terms. And it's for a limited period of time. The term, term is often five years, sometimes more, sometimes less. In Arizona, it's 15 years, which is an awful long time. Um, at the end of the term, the authorizer, the governmental 